Does cock size matter? So let's dissect this and break this down a little bit. Today, we're back at it again, answering medical questions you are afraid of or maybe a little embarrassed to ask your doctor. I figure if one person is wanting the answer to a particular question, chances are maybe multiple people are wondering the exact same thing. That's right, you guys are always flooding my comments, asking me some really awesome questions, and I can't wait to answer them. Fair warning to you all. Sometimes these questions can get a little bit strange and interesting, but today we're not holding back at all and tackling them. But before we get into it, if if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Dr. Jordan Wagner. If you enjoy the educational reactions and other stuff that you see here on this channel, please smash that subscribe button and turn your bell notifications on. That way you learn when I post a new video. All right, let's dive right in. Why do I have to poop when I get nervous? Oh, that's a good question. Pooping when you get nervous, anxiety has to do with like your nervous system, your parasympathetic versus your sympathetic nervous system or your autonomic nervous system. So your sympathetic nervous system, you get anxious, you get release of epinephrine, different serotonins, and then basically dumps your gut. So basically it has to do with your autonomic nervous system where it's affecting the brain gut connection, it has to do with secretion of different enzymes, which increases gastric juices, a lot of times people who have bad anxiety also suffer from irritable bowel syndrome. They are connected. That's why you can potentially poop when you get very nervous or have anxiety. Yo, hey, Dr. Wagner, I had a question. Does wearing certain underwear affect the amount of semen you produce? Like say if you wear briefs or boxer briefs or other tight underwear. Good questions, but there are studies that actually are back and forth about this. Testicles are outside the body in your scrotum. They're outside because they actually do need to be at a lower temperature, four to six degrees below what our normal body temperature is. The idea behind the tight pants and the tight underwear is that you're bringing your testicles closer to your body, increasing the temperature. It has nothing to do with the production of semen because semen is actually what the sperm swim in, but the sperm production is still the same, but there could be mutations or not highly functioning sperm when you raise the temperatures. There are also studies that show that degree of change and the temporary effects of your clothing being tight doesn't necessarily actually affect it more long term. So good question. So wear whatever you'd like to wear, whatever's comfortable. What can happen if we eat dog food that looks and tastes like human food? Good question. Eating dog food in probably a short period of time or in small doses won't hurt you, but it's made for a dog. There are different vitamins and nutrients that are placed in it, like supplements that are advantageous to a dog versus not so good for humans. We shouldn't be eating as much as what's in there. There's a lot of byproducts. There's a lot of soy products. There's a lot of stuff that you normally wouldn't eat. The dog food should be as close to what they would naturally have, but hitting their nutrients. So there are different things that go on in a dog's body versus our body relating to the nutrients that it needs and produces on its own. So to come back about the dog food, no, you shouldn't be eating dog food on the regular. If you accidentally eat it, you will be okay. Is there a medical way to make feet stop smelling so much? Yes, there is, and there's a commonality of this. So the word for smelly feet is actually bromodosis. There's actually a medical term. And the most common reason for smelly feet is sweaty feet. We have so many millions of sweat glands throughout our body and the feet has 250,000 about, so to speak. So what happens is when you sweat can have different types of bacteria that grow in these areas, thus producing bad smells. Make sure you wear socks that are like cotton or wool, natural fibers so that they don't hold on to the sweat. If you do get sweaty, change the socks out. Make sure you're cleaning your feet, make sure you're showering and just good hygiene. Keep your feet dry, which will then reduce them from smelling. Question for this series. Why do I sneeze like a maniac when I look in the general direction of the sun and when it shines on my face? Otherwise, I'm not, but when that happens, I sometimes sneeze more than 20 times a minute. This is actually a true reflex. It's called the photic sneeze reflex, but it's actually like inherited and congenital. 18 to 35% of the population actually have this and people who get sunshine or different like type of lights actually are more prone to sneezing. It's in the same category if somebody basically eats something and then they 
sneeze after. So it's not anything bad, and you can just blame it on your ancestors for giving you this gift of sneezing. Does masturbation cause acne? No. Masturbation has nothing to do with acne. When somebody has an inkling to masturbate more, it's typically as they're discovering themselves and having hormonal changes, which then increases the likelihood that you're having acne at the same time. Does the act of masturbation and releasing more often increase your risk of having acne? No, it doesn't. Why is my pee yellow? Good question. So there's actually like a byproduct in the urine that makes it yellow. It's called urochrome. And it has to do with like the breakdown of cells in the body. It's excreted through the urine. The lightness or the darkness of the urine of that color yellow has to do with how hydrated or not you are. So if you're very hydrated, it's gonna be a very pale yellow to clear versus if you're very dehydrated, you can be super dark. But there are also many different colors of the urine. Yellow equals urochrome, which doesn't equal anything bad. I read a life hack article, I can't remember where, while back, which suggested that a stuffed up nose could be relieved by firmly pressing the tongue to the front of the roof of the mouth for about 30 seconds. I was skeptical, but I have tried it and it seems to work. Is there any anatomical reason for this to work or is it simply a placebo effect? It's not a placebo effect. There are different nerves as well as vascular supply to the roof of the mouth. Say you have brain freeze, right? So you actually shove your thumb to the roof of your mouth or to the palate. What you're doing is actually warming it back up. So you're causing the blood vessels to redilate, which is part of the mechanism of why you're actually getting this brain freeze. Pushing your tongue to the roof of the mouth, it has to do with basically a nerve impulse to that area. But I've also seen that you actually put it in conjunction with like pushing on your forehead and it's all related to like pressure and nerves. If you have like a stuffed face or a nasal congestion, we actually have multiple pockets in our faces where this could occur. You have your maxillary sinuses that sit next to your nose or your nasal cavity. Then you actually have your frontal sinuses, you have your ethmoid sinuses. It can be filled with fluid when you get really sick and cause a lot of pressure because it's bone that's not expanding. So it needs to get out of there so it all drains out. If by pushing your tongue against the roof of your mouth that you feel better, hey, you found the hack and it works, use it. Does cock size matter? Not really. So let's dissect this and break this down a little bit. Size matters subjectively to the individuals, right? If you're on the extreme of a bell curve, right? Too big or too small, maybe there's issues, right? Too big can cause pain to your partner, can cause tears and bleeding and injuries and not satisfaction, uncomfortability. Too small, you might run the risk of not being able to pleasure certain spots in the body. But most people are an average size, average size length, average size girth. And why would a person taking in the penis basically want something huge that can hurt them? They don't want that. The person wants to be pleasured, right? At the end of the day, size only matters to be able to get into the right position to give pleasure to your partner. These were awesome. These were super thought provoking comments. I love them. Keep them coming. Drop them in the comment section, DM me, whatever. I will take a look at them, I promise. And maybe I'll even include some in the next video. So if you guys like this video, check out this series right here. And as always, please subscribe, turn your bell notifications on. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.